Hello and welcome to the Business Success Show. And today we have a very special guest with us from Northern California. It's Matt Catrum here, your business coach. And when it comes to growing your business, when it comes to your journey as an entrepreneur, you've got to understand we need as many resources as possible. And the reason why we do the Business Success Show is to bring you expertise, people who can help you to really improve in what you do. Because ultimately, you want to enjoy your business, you want to enjoy your life, and this, this gentleman moved himself and his family eventually from Southern California to Northern California. So he doesn't only teach this stuff, he actually lives it and practices it and has a good life as well. So I wanna welcome Mr. James Hipkin. Now, James, welcome to the Business Success Show. Hey, Mac, I'm really happy to be here. Thank you for having me. You're most welcome, and thank you for making time to join us here. Now, for those of you, if you're listening in right now, let me tell you a little bit about James before we get into the show. James helps seven-figure businesses get their website that they need in order to get to eight figures or more. Now, he's worked with smaller businesses, but typically, if you're looking at making more money through your website or through digital marketing, this is a gentleman who can really, really help you. Now, since 2010, he has built his clients' businesses with digital marketing. And today, James is passionate about websites and helping the rest of us understand online marketing. He has a very special way and unique way of looking at it. And a lot of his clients say it's jargon-free, common sense approach, and we like things simple. As an entrepreneur, we are busy already. And why would someone try to complicate us and pull the wool over our eyes when it can be simple? This gentleman is here to help us to do that. So, James, welcome. Tell us a little bit about your entrepreneurial journey up until now, if you can. I'd be happy to, Mac. Um, and it ties in nicely with your with your introduction. Thank you for that. Nice um, I spent a long time. Uh, at a very high level in corporate marketing and, cor and advertising, working with Fortune 50 companies at large, very well-known brands. Um, I've worked with Apple, I've worked with Sprint, I've worked with Visa, Wells Fargo, um, very large, well-established brands. And you know that was awesome experience. Um, it actually took me around the world. Um, I started my career in Toronto. I spent uh, three years in Venezuela working with Pillsbury oh to launch Green Giant Canned Vegetables in Latin America. Mm. And then I spent four years in Madrid, Spain, uh, where I spent a lot of time in London, which is where you are, because right. um, my main anchor client in that time in Madrid was Rover Cars. Oh, okay. And That's many you know, years ago. <laughs> you know, we built a pan-European database marketing system that for Rover Cars, which was one of the very first of its kind. Um, then I was transferred to the head office in Chicago, and I was there for nine years, one of uh, initially a small team of about 45 people. By the time I left five years later, it was 450 people. Um, so I was very involved in that growth process. And then I got transferred to San Francisco to be president of a small uh, digital agency in San Francisco. Mm. And it's what got me on my entrepreneurial journey, and particularly around websites, is I kept seeing people not taking full advantage of the website, not understanding how important it is to a business in this new online world. And while you know this has been changing and evolving and growing, one of the you know, things that have come out of the pandemic is the, the growth of online activity and online commerce has just exploded. Yeah, definitely. And that genie is not going back in the bottle. Yeah, absolutely. And the website is the most important digital asset that a business owns. And yet, most of them aren't up to the task. Yeah, we see a lot and, of that. Yeah. So the, and the idea that I've, I've come up with, which I find really helpful for my, my smaller business customers, mm. is this concept that I call the hub and spoke strategy. Tell us more about that, the hub and spoke strategy. Okay. Yes. 
it's it it's it's a reaction to the feedback I get from working day to day with businesses where they they're overwhelmed mm. by all of the choices that are being thrown at them. You know, their nephew is telling them that they need to be on Instagram and their <laughs> daughter is telling them they need to be on TikTok. And, right. and, and, you know, this guy on the phone is saying SEO is the second coming and, and all these, there's so many choices sure. and the proliferation of technology and, you know, it's just very, very confusing. And yet they recognize that they have to be participating in digital marketing. Mm. because that's where their customers are. Yep. The day when the retail location was the center of their universe, is that's gone. People go to the website before they go to the store. And where they'll they go check it out first. Yeah, right. They've got to check right. it out online and then decide whether they want to go in store or not, right? Exactly. And particularly for professional services businesses. I mean, I, I hear this frequently from professional services people. Well, I don't get very much business from the website. It's all word of mouth. Mm. Well, let's think about the customer's journey for just a second. If you're an executive and a colleague of yours says, you need to talk to this CPA firm, accounting firm. Mm. I don't, don't know what they're called in the UK. but uh, Accountants. Accountants, yeah. Yeah. And you go, huh. I, I really have been thinking about that. So you go check out their website. You need confirmation that mm -hmm. this firm understands your problem, has the capabilities to solve your problem, and are the kind of people you want to work with. Yeah. Okay. If you don't get that, if you see a website that was built in the 1990s or the <laughs> early 2000s and and you, you have to question to yourself, hmm, I wonder if they're still in business. Mm -hmm. If that's the thought that's going through your mind, guess what? You don't call them. Right. And you as a business owner, you can't see the null set. You can't see all the people who went to the website and then never bothered to follow through. Yeah, yeah. Right? So yeah. this is one of my, my things is that First question I ask a, a, a new customer coming to us is, what do you think the primary objective of the website is? And they'll often say conversion. Okay. And 95% of the time, that's wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're generating seven figures in traffic to your website monthly, and we have websites that we've built and managed that are doing that, mm -hmm then conversion is a valid choice. If you're investing in SEO and have, you know, all kinds of organic traffic, then conversion is a valid choice. The vast majority of businesses don't have that. They don't have that. All right. So I, I hear what you're saying. And, um, and it's, you know, they say common sense is not always common. So that's why people need to speak yeah. to you, James, right? So um, in my mind, I've got this uh, hub and spoke. Right. And tell me, tell me more about how does all this connect to digital marketing? Well, that, and that's a great word, connect. Because, you know, you've got spokes, like these are okay. bicycle spokes. And this is kind of cool. And um, I've got a hub and I've got a rim here somewhere. The reality is digital marketing tactics executed in isolation are expensive noise. Wow. You know, if you think about your website is now the hub of your digital universe and okay. your digital marketing tactics are the spokes, the channels you're using, the tactics you're using are the spokes that are moving out of the hub and back into the hub. Mm -hmm. And the rim that holds it all together is your content and messaging strategy. Right. Okay. When you start thinking about digital marketing like that as a whole, connected to your website and using your content and messaging strategy as the rim that holds it all together, suddenly you've got the power of the wheel, which is one of the most fundamental inventions mm -hmm. in mankind. Yeah. And you've stopped having a lot of digital noise going on and you start having a powerful, effective 
digital marketing program. It's effective because it creates value for your customers mm -hmm. and it creates value for your business. All right. Okay. Well, for the people listening in, let me just, uh, I'm just going to be pretending I'm them for a moment. So the will being the content, the messaging, the stuff we're getting out there to create awareness, the spokes being the, if I can use the channels, the platform, the, 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 the thing to deliver the message in exactly and to media. lead people the media right to lead people to the website where you want them to take some kind of action um okay so i've got it website i've got the so i've got the the hub i've got the spokes i've got the wheel okay right. good carry on right and the you want them to take some sort of action but you also want them to it, you want to create value in the context of the website. If you can draw people into the website, th there are an awful lot of products with names that are masquerading as brands, mm. right? What is a brand? A brand is not a product with a name. It's not even a product with a fancy logo. Right. A brand exists when there is what I call relationship equity. That is a perceived value in working with this brand or using this brand that goes beyond the functional and transactional benefits of the product or service that they're using. Got it. You need that extra layer of, of value. And the website is an ideal place to create that. You can create valuable content that will be useful to your customers and then use your media channels to push that content out to your customers. You can use your advertising to you know, introduce what you're doing and draw people through a funnel back into the website. Right, okay. You, you can use social media to, to you know, create awareness for what, you, this is the, con, the RIM, right? The content strategy yeah. to create awareness for how you are different. And then you can't put the great American novel into a Facebook ad. No. So, but you can draw people back to the website where they can get richer and, and deeper information about your product or service. And so you can start to see how this content is oscillating in and out of the website and the consumers are going to the website and generating incremental value, value that goes beyond the functional benefits of the product or service. And you start thinking about it like that. And you know what happens, Mac? Lots of stuff falls away. Okay. Right? You suddenly, you're not, well, why am I doing TikTok? Because my audience doesn't right. pay any attention to TikTok. Mm -hmm. I'm not criticizing TikTok. Yeah. But if your audience is over 40, don't waste mm -hmm. your time on TikTok. Yeah because yeah. it's not effectively delivering your message from your website back out to your customers. Right. Right. So stuff starts falling off and, and you start to get a more streamlined, more efficient, more effective digital marketing plan that is creating value for your customers and value for your business. So in, 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 in the, based on what you said, then it gives your clients a lot more clarity and naturally they start to see what they need to eliminate, get rid of, delete, remove, and really exactly. focus their time, energy, money, attention on what's really going to deliver the result they're looking for, right? Right. What's going to deliver value? I had a, a customer who came to us. Uh, they were using one of the, the sort of platform-based e-commerce things. Okay. And he came to us and he said, I'm not, I'm just not getting the business that I need to get. And now this is a guy who sells a very specific kind of orchid. Organ. Not, not house plants, not orchids in general, a okay. very specific kind of orchid. All right. It, can't, it doesn't get much more niche than that. So I talked to him about the hub and spoke strategy and I asked him what he was doing and he was doing all kinds of different things, but nothing was connected. Oh, wow. So I said, we're going to redesign your website and get it focused around your main message. Mm -hmm. We're going to create that. Your website's going to be the hub and you're going to pick no more than two channels that you're going to use. And I said, and I'm going to pick one of them for you. Okay. And that, and that is your email list. What? That's one. Mm -hmm. Right. 
So the website is the most important digital asset that a business owns. The email list is the second most important digital asset that a business mm. owns. Everything else is rented land. Right, right. Right, so you're going to focus. And now you're, you are a great photographer and you have wonderful pictures of these beautiful plants. So let's use a medium that facilitates images. Wow. So right. before is, you go on, before you go on, let me rewind everyone in case they did not catch that. The most precious, most valuable digital asset you own, you own as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, as a business, is your exactly. website. And the second is your database list. Right. Now, why is that important? Well, and I love the analogy you use that everything else you are just renting. It's just, uh, it, it can go like that. Just right. like they can, when they can Google, change the rules. Absolutely. Go Google changes the algorithms or some uh, Facebook, you get shut down and canceled. You can't operate that anymore. Your account gets removed. It gets hacked. But what you're doing with those uh, channels is moving people into your database list in, through your website that you can control, that you own. I love that. I just wanted to make sure I capture that. People yep. really get that. And that's, that's super important. So he and his wife focused in and, and his audience is older, right? People who mm. are into that, into they, they tend to be retired. They're definitely over 40. Right. So he and his wife focused in on building their organic presence on Facebook. Okay. They used their beautiful pictures. They were very active. They reached out to people. They really focused their energies on working on that single channel. Right. In the first year, he more than doubled his business. <laughs> but in the, in sub in the subsequent years, he tripled his business. Mm -hmm. He is still just using Facebook and his email list. That's it. Doesn't have and to he he has anything. driven that the business. When I came to me, it was a you know mid five figure business. It's a significant six figure business now. Fantastic selling a specific kind of orchid online man so so he's and and you said it because it's so niche he, his messaging has to be very clear he's talking to a very targeted group of people and understanding their problems and challenges and delivering that value that solution to them fantastic very very good and i love i love that uh, i love that story there right and, so, and for for example another example i we I did a little bit of SEO work for him. And I said, look, people are trying to figure out how to raise these plants. Mm. So you need to build some pages around cultural tips and how to go about raising these plant, these things. And because there's thousands and thousands of searches every month looking for information on this. So he went about doing this. He had the wonderful photography. He did some videos, et cetera, et cetera. Right. He got his pages ranked on the first page of Google for, against this very, very specific keyword, you know, you know, call mm. cultural tips for this kind of orchid and his traffic. Again, this is another example of a hub and spoke, right? He used his hub. And in this case, search engine optimization is the spoke okay. drawing traffic back in yeah. building it, you know, offering people, Hey, sign up for our email list and we'll, I'll give you 10% or 20% off or free shipping on your first order. Right, mm -hmm. build built his list. All right, so it's great, great, great story there. Built his list, doubled his business first year. Subsequently, um, grew it significantly, tripled it. Uh, so let me ask you a question here. If a small business owner says to you, "So, which digital marketing tactics should I be using right now?" I think I know what you're going to say, but I want you to everyone to hear this. Which one should I be using right now? I keep hearing do this one or do this social media or do it this way or do it that way. What is the answer? Okay. One of the most common mistakes I see is what I call inside out marketing. Okay. Tell us about that. Okay. So what inside out marketing is you're talking all about yourself mm. and you're doing what you think is cool. Outside in marketing is where you 
deeply and thoroughly understand what your audience is looking for, who your audience is, where your audience plays, where what media are your audience using. Mm. And then you, whether you like Facebook or not, is immaterial. Right. If you that's where your audience is, then that's where you should be. Right. So it's not determined on which particular platform or social media platform you prefer, you like, or where you hang out. But it's about where is your audience? What are, where they are your where customers? Are they? Where are your customers? Absolutely. And then utilize that and get that to work for you, not the other way around. Fantastic. Exactly. Love it. And, and the outside in, the other extremely common mistake I see when I'm auditing websites is the website copy is inside out. Okay. You, you, you need to lead with the consumer's problem. Right. Not with your solution. Yes. Leading with your solution is inside out. You're talking about yourself. I had another customer who came to us. He was, he had been a, a, a Senator in the New York state legislature mm. and he wasn't reelected and he was a lawyer so he decided I'm going to put out my shingle and I'm going to be a lobbyist because I've spent years writing the laws for New York state. I understand the New York state laws. I can really help business owners do business with the state of New York. Okay. Right. Yeah. He, what, he wasn't getting any traction and he came to me and he, and I reviewed his website. I said, Craig, you're all inside out. You're talking about yourself. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, yeah, of course, because that's who they're hiring. They're hiring me. I said, yes, that is the ultimate goal <coughs> that you're looking for and that ultimately your customers are looking for, but they have a journey. Mm -hmm. And you're trying to short circuit their journey and that doesn't work. Mm -hmm. So you need to lead with a rich, clear description of the problem that they are trying to solve. Yeah. Then present yourself as the potential solution. Then your years in the legislature become reason to believe. Your credentials as a lawyer become reasons to believe. It all becomes reasons to believe that your solution is valid. But you've got to start with confirming with your consumer, your audience, that you understand their problem. Right. Once you've done that, then they're going to be open to your message about, okay, so what's your solution? Okay. So probably when you think about it, that's just, that's how we work in on a interpersonal level. True. Right. right. You yeah. know, if you, if you go to a lawyer, the first thing the court lawyer is going to say to you is, okay, so what, what's, what's, why are you here? What's the problem you're trying to solve? Yeah. And then the, you'll go into the details of the, of the problem you're trying to solve. And then the lawyer will know how to respond. Mm -hmm. then okay. The website be... is the, is the digital version of your conversation with a customer. Don't try to short circuit human nature. And what it, what, about the entrepreneur, the small business owner who says to you, James, but James, I, I know what I do. I know I'm great, I, I give great service. Here are all the um, testimonials. They, our clients love us, but I don't know what to say on our website. Is that something you help people with? Absolutely. Okay. You know, why, why did your client hire you? What right. was the, what was uh, another interesting, I, I, Years and years ago, when I was a young account executive in an advertising agency, wow. um, I got assigned for a while with the, to the gentleman who was doing business development. And we were talking to some client. I don't even remember what the, who the client was, but I remember what he said to me. I was up on my high horse because this client was doing something wrong, right? I was young and full of myself and... <laughs> And it didn't matter whether I was right or wrong. That wasn't the point. And he understood that. And he said something to me that was very profound. And it stuck with me all these years. He said, James, you can't fix the client's problems until they are, in fact, the client. Mm, right. Yes. Right. right? Yeah. And so don't, don't lead with your solution. 
That's right. Lead with a demonstration that you understand their problem. Their problem. That's it. And then your solution becomes a benefit. Yeah. A reason why they should engage with you. And right. things like the testimonials and companies you've worked with, et cetera, these become what I call reason to believe. Right. They bring credibility to your proposed solution. But that hierarchy of information that follows tightly with the customer's journey means a much more effective end result. So in the case of my New York, ex-New York state senator, he called me up in January and said, you know, the website's a couple of years old. Should we be refreshing it? And I said, Craig, how is your business? <laughs> and he said, I can't stop the phone. I mean, it just keeps ringing. Okay. I, I'm so busy. I, I don't have time to get, I just, it's crazy. <laughs> I've had to hire people. Uh -huh. and right? I said, Craig, I'd love to take your money, but I don't think we should change the website well, there you because go. it's well, working. Yeah, absolutely. On that note, uh, it's been amazing. You know, you've been listening to Mr. James Hipkin from Northern California, USA, uh, all about digital marketing. He's spoke, been speaking about the hub and the spoke and the rim strategy, hub and spoke strategy. And we've been learning from that. And in a moment, I'm going to go back to James, see if he has any last words in this regard and you're listening to the business success show and if you are watching this on any of the channels uh, like it like this video make a comment tell us what just popped out to you what did you enjoy what did you what did james say you thought oh that's very important subscribe if you're on a channel where you need to subscribe or connect with us or or like what we're doing so we can bring you more awesome amazing experts teachers just like James, who can help you to take your business to that next level. So again, thank you. James, over to you. Any last words, anything you want to say in regards to our conversation here? Uh, if I were to leave one thought with folks, don't try to boil the ocean. <laughs> you know, pick a couple of things that you know that your audience is going to be will be will relate to sure and do them well and then do them better great you know because there's always the tendency of the the new shiny thing flies through mm -hmm. and yeah you really want to be disciplined about this and stick to what and just make what you're doing better Go you ahead. can test you can test some other things it's called beating the control but it's always focus in on the stuff that's working there's a, a an old a, a axiom that you probably have heard mac you know what's the key to success water the flowers prune the weeds okay yeah, same idea you're right right keep doing whatever's working do more of that excellent so James, for those people who want to connect with you, want to learn more from you, maybe contact you, maybe they need help, your support. What's the best way um, for them to do that? How can they connect with you? I'd be happy to connect with them. If they go to VIPchatwithjames.com, that's VIPchatwithjames.com, they can book some time on my calendar and we can have an initial discussion and I'll be happy to share what I can. And if it makes sense to do business going forward, well, that will become clear in that conversation. Okay. And so VIP chat with james.com and they can book a session with you and have that conversation. Excellent. Well, I want to say thank you for uh, uh, giving of your time to help uh, other entrepreneurs to improve in that regard, because if they are wasting time, energy, resources, money, and you can show them how to do it better and get effective results, and add bit more value to their clients, that's a good thing. So you've been listening to the, to the Business Success Show with the business coach, Mac Atram, and Mr. James Hipkin. And so listen, share this video, like it, comment, as I said earlier on. And so if there was any specific thing that stuck out, stuck out for you, uh, make the comment and also connect with James at the web address. We'll put it in here as well so you can connect with him. So James, on that note, I wanna say thank you for your time. Thank you for your input. Thank you for your insights. 
and thank you for the knowledge that you've shared here, some golden nuggets which our, our audience here can utilize as well. Thank you for your time. It's been my pleasure, Mac. Thank you for having me. You're most welcome. And until we speak again, I want to say um, have a safe time at this time. Look after yourself. Look after your families. Uh, James, I know you're doing, <laughs> you gave me the description of what's happening in Northern California, in the woodlands and, uh, and, and, and your forestry and your great outdoors. So I know you're taking care of yourself as well. Take care. Bye for now.